<laughs> Either of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Everyone here is so excited that you're here. This is a past time.
network television. And um, so, you know, getting them to write that kind of stuff for me in that episode, I was just, I was beyond thrilled. And I wanted to honor it, you know, to the highest, like, degree of truth. And it was honestly that scene at the end by the carousel. Um, that was, I will always, like, that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of POI, when I think of all that stuff. And it was very hard as, like, an actor to stay in that place and, um, it was just, it was very challenging. It was very challenging and I thought, you know, with, you know, my scene partner and I, you know, I'm only good because she makes me look good, but like, um, I thought... Oh, so sweet. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so that's, for me, that was one of my most memorable scenes. She was awesome. <laughs> yes. And, and um and yeah, it was it was difficult, it was challenging, but you know, when I watched it I thought we did a really good job. set up. So you may get in line. There's no microphone coming to you. So you should get up. There is a line. We'll form a right here. If you have questions, please line up. Uh, this is a question. Well, they're lining up. simulation episode um, and this question comes from Arya V on Twitter yep. um, so we get to see different aspects of your character different versions um, and they felt so different how do you prepare to do that you've been in this character you know who they are how do you prepare to do this character just slightly different um, you know that's the fun thing too about my job is I feel like, I mean, look, I, this is what I, I feel like acting is a lot of like, you know, human psychology. And um, uh, we are all not just one thing. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, no matter what you are, you are comprised of so many different feelings, emotions, events things that have happened to you, we're all bitchy, we're all funny, we're all crazy, we're all sweet, we're all, you know what I mean? So we're all just a bunch of everything. And I think with actors, you know, you just try and find that part of you that most, like, the, you know, closely resembles that which you're trying to portray. And um, I guess that's kind of it. I just, I just really try to tap into that part of myself that I can relate to um, what's happening, and or how the character is feeling, really. I don't know if I answered your question. It's kind of a tough one. It, it's like, you know, how do you walk? We put one foot for the other. How do you put one foot for the other? You just kind of do. So I guess that's the same thing, you know, it's like you just kind of think about that part of you that would respond to the situation, and how would you respond, and you know, and, and trust me, there were plenty of times playing Shaw where I didn't, I didn't know if I was doing a good job. I didn't know, um, you know, because they, they always wanted me to, to be tough and to not show emotion and to not, you know, but at the same time, like, I feel like we're humans, we're not robots, so there's got to be a little bit of emotion that sometimes 
you know, seeks through the veneer. And and I, I guess we got it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I think we'll start with the first question. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, my question goes to Sarah. What is it like to kiss and meow? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> questions have been kind of like, you know, flirtatious and stuff, and you guys have already mentioned fighting and everything. Um, throughout the show, it's been like insinuated that Rude and Shaw have a lot of kinky sex. And so, based off your perspective of the characters, like, what do you think are some kinks that Rune and Shaw have? Uh, we're gonna keep this uh, not going any further. Are there kinks? Oh, is this like a PG thing? Is, is it? There are, oh, there are kids here? Yes. Okay. I'm Let's sorry. remember the show aired on uh, CBS. Um, I, I apologize, I'm sorry. So um, we're going to keep things well, okay. zip tight? Alright, sorry. Did you think we're going to keep things zip tight? Zip tight. <laughs> just want to clarify. I apologize for the children in the audience. Um, so I guess another question would be, um, in the in the scene where um, the machine, as Ruth's voice, is giving the message about Shaw being a uh, straight line and everything like that, um, you know, there's only been like another time where we see Shaw's emotion come through, and that's when she's helping the little girl. And so, um, in that moment, you know, when Shaw cries and stuff like that, do you think that, you know, her being a sociopath and everything, like, do you think that is when? You know, she actually does feel love for Rue in that moment, or she actually does realize, like, no, I actually can be with this person, like, just because I'm this way, it doesn't, it doesn't have to hinder me from, you know, loving this, this woman. I think she realizes it before that moment, you know, there were some, um, I can't remember all of them, but there were definitely some scenes before that, even as far as season, you know, going back to season four, where, the character at Root was, you know, definitely getting under Shaw's skin, and I think in the beginning, I, I really don't think that Shaw had a thing for Root. You know, I think um, it really caught her by surprise. And by the time we got to that scene, I think it was already, Shaw's feelings were already there. You know, I don't think it was in that moment that she realized that, or she would not have gotten emotional, but, you know, she's definitely one of those characters who, um, you know, she's kind of a lone wolf, and she found herself amongst this family, and I think she found, um, you know, her, that relationship with, with the dog, with her, with the fellas on the show, you know, like, enjoying it more than she thought she would. And, you know, realized that being isolated wasn't all it's cracked up to be. And, you know, and yeah, I mean, in an, in an alternate universe, you know, I do think that, you know, the two of these were together, and, um, you know, and they made little shoot babies <laughs> with the help of a machine. You know? <laughs> and um, but yeah, I think she realized it way before then that this was somebody that. She so when do you think she realized it? I'm trying to remember honestly because I can't remember the. Sh I can't remember. Um, I got dumber with each kid I had, so like <laughs> I don't know. But I really feel like there was uh, there was something that happened in season four, um, where her flirtations just, they just started working, you know, and like, I just remember when she came to pick me up on a motorcycle, and she hands me a helmet, and I like get on the back of the bike, and we drive off, and you know, there's just something there, and then my need for her help was another thing on the show, like I needed her to help me, and so it was just, you know, it just kind of developed, I mean, it was like, you know, I think it was like somebody pulling out the rug from underneath her when she realized she did have feelings for her. But again, because the character was supposed to be so reserved, it was never anything. I think the dream, um, or the fantasy, the simulation, I think that was, you know, that was the most um, Shaw would ever show. Um, you know, but even that was pretty much all done for you guys. You know, it's like, because they, we read the feedback that was on Twitter and what the fans wanted, and you know, that was, that was really done for you all. Thank you. I have another question that came from Twitter before we get back to the line. Um, from Jay is for Amy. Although Root was um, one of the major characters, we didn't get to see a lot of her background between Hannah's murder and becoming an assassin. What do you think happened in between? Well, I, I'm, 
I'm assuming because her kind of introduction to the, the teen machine family was about pursuing the machine, so I think she sort of took her organ trail <laughs> knowledge that you saw. That was about all you knew she did with computers at that point and, and went really deep into trying to find the AI and, and to make AI. And then when she found out that Harold had had created the machine, it, was, it sort of became her life's goal to, to find this man. And, Release, release the machine. <laughs> so I think the lesson we learned is everyone should really be playing Oregon Trail and like really get into it. Exactly. And go to school. And go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Where you play Oregon Trail? Yes, we have another question. Who's on? Okay. Um, so my question might be a little awkward, but I'm drawn to the house. <laughs> see what this question is. <laughs> so obviously you guys are really good friends and you guys have shown that. And my question is, um, so obviously since you're both so freaking hot, um, is it weird for you guys to make out with each other because you're such good friends? <laughs> <laughs> I think what she's trying to say is, as actors, sometimes doesn't it get difficult to work with your friends in such intimate ways? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it is. It's like, you know, it, yeah, because we are such good friends and, you know, we genuinely like each other as people. And, I mean, you know, we are, we... <laughs> yes, it is, it is, it is weird. It is weird. It's like, it's like kissing your sister. You know what I mean? Like, so sorry. <laughs> Shane do. <laughs> Hairdresser, that's right. <laughs> that's right. 
Yeah, you're right. And I'm so glad you guys know my job more than me. But, uh, and yeah, she was like gonna be like Sally Hirschberger, you know? And like, and we just like dominate New York and be these like power lesbians together. And um, yeah. yeah. You know, I worked with Kate, I worked with Kate not too long ago. I worked with her last year on Ray Donovan. And, um, yeah, no, she's great, she's super cute, you know, stuff's on Twitter and Instagram, whatever, if you want to see who cares. Okay, go ahead. Hey, hey, so everybody knows, you know, like, the filming process for film and TV is different. What do you guys prefer, and, like, why? Is it, like, the pacing, the blocking? I prefer the, um, process of filmmaking more than the process of TV making. But I enjoy how, you know, you shoot a movie and it doesn't come out for a year, maybe a year and a half. With TV, there's a more instant result. Um, but as far as the, the process goes, I do enjoy film only because I feel like you can take more chances. You, the, you know, the people involved are really there for the art of storytelling and they want to try things and be inventive and you move at a slower pace. You only shoot maybe like four or five pages a day, whereas in the TV show you shoot 10, 11 pages a day. And it's just quicker and it's not as, sometimes it's just about, okay, we've got to get it, move on, get it, move on. Whereas in film, I feel like you have more chance to like play with your character. I, I think I like TV. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I think for a couple of reasons. One, going back to the crew, you really start to have a family and I like that sort of nine months of the year you're spending with these people and I, I guess I've always been lucky to be with really great groups of people and, and cast and, and also just that you get, the characters get to evolve so much and, and change and I, I just like getting to know a character that well so having that time, now I, mean, I guess shows can get canceled <laughs> but on the good ones that you get to stay on and, and you get to, to find those characters I really like. I just want to point out that some good shows also get canceled, like like Dollhouse. And, and fairly legal. But fairly legal was quality. Quality. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, it's for both of you. Um, in canon, we see that Shaw has a personality disorder, and it's sort of talked about in the, among the fans that Brew probably does have some type of personality disorder as well. Not, <laughs> um, but how does that um, change the way that you guys approach your characters when you know that there is that sort of affect that they have that is not necessarily neurotypical? I, mean, I, I think for, for I think because neither, I don't think either of their characters, maybe Shaw when you were at the hospital, but have really been diagnosed as this. I don't think they're yeah. going into like therapy to get some help or anything. <laughs> I, I think they're play, I think you know, that's where we got a lot of the quirks of the characters and that's how you were able to explain things that you do things that maybe a normal person wouldn't do, like <laughs> a lot of the things that we did. But, um, but I think just playing them as truthful to what was written and, and to the person that we wanted to portray. I don't think we were ever played into any sort of personality. I, you know, I just know, like my, for me the note, I just remember, it's like ingrained in my head. It was like, no smiles, know this, know that. You know, you have, you have an access to type personality disorder. And I looked it up because I wasn't sure if I was real. And it is real. It actually is a real thing. And it is. It's like people that are very, you know, they've got so much, whatever it is, so much is suppressed and they don't know how to access it or to get it out. And um, so it actually is a thing. But I, I did not have the luxury of, to, like, for example, to sit with anybody and, who had that or to do anything like that. So, um, but that's also why, like, I like the process of filmmaking because in a film I would have had that time. Um, but yeah, no, it, you know, it, do, it does inform the character and, and it does change things a bit, you know, just try to play everything just stone cold, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi guys. 
Um, I just want to know, besides your own characters on the show, who was your favourite character and why was it Bear? <laughs> why was it Bear? <laughs> is that assuming that we said Bear was our favourite character? I mean, that is the correct answer. <laughs> different and you had to you had to respond differently because you didn't really know what the dog was gonna do so you know even though he was the ultimate scene stealer you, you can't out cute the dog no matter how hard I damn try and so you know it's like working with babies you're not gonna out cute the baby like it just doesn't work that way but um, um, but he really was my favorite for that because he really like kept me on my toes and I had a great relationship with the dog the dog actually bit a couple of the cat, the cats. He bit Jim and he bit Kevin. Yeah, yeah, but 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 you know, but the dog never bit me, and, and the dog never bit Michael, and it never bit Amy, and you know that's yeah. all that really matters. It's <laughs> all that I lo I loved working with the dog, and then one time I decided I hated working with the dog because we were in the middle of the polar vortex and Sarah's face was blue and I had no feeling in any of my limbs and we had been filming outside all day and the animal film services came and told us that the dog had to go home because it was too cold for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right, that's actually a really funny story. The snow was coming down so hard you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And we're all standing, we're all standing there like in a park. Like who the is gonna go to a park when it's snowing that hard? And I had I had lines in the scene, I had dialogue, but I refused to say any of them. I didn't say anything. I just stood with my head down and the snow was coming this way. And it was Jim, Michael, and Amy, and they all had lines, and it came time for me to talk, and I just was like, nope. It was miserable. I Miserable. <laughs> Thank you for your question. We can only take a few more, so oh. if you're at the end line, I'm sorry. You started late, though. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, first off, for, for Amy, do you think that Root had a crush on Hannah Fry? Because it kind of came across that way a little bit, her friend at the beginning. Um, like, she was before your time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, her friend. I think. And my, my main question is, for, for Root, what do you think changed? When did it change that she went from seeing people, like, fundamentally as bad code, to being part of a family? Like, how do you, what do you think changed the transition for that? I, I mean, I think it was... Yeah. 
the new Marvel X-Men. The reality, uh, virtual reality project. Is there anything either of you can tell us about either project? Um, Aside from the networks? Well, I mean, everyone knows kind of what, you know, you say Marvel, you kind of know what you're getting, but my thing is, um, I don't know. <laughs> of what it's about is, uh, I don't know if anyone ever saw the movie Inception. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's kind of like the uh, TV version of Inception. I go into people's deep subconsciousness, subconsciousness, subconscious, whatever, to um, try and, you know, help um, solve their issues and their problems. And there's, so it's a, so that's the virtual reality part of it all, is I'm going into people's subconscious. It's kind of like that movie Jennifer Lopez, The Cell. It's like if The Cell meets Inception, it's like that kind of thing. And then throughout it, I've got my own, I fall into this rabbit hole where the program starts messing with me, and the things that are happening in the virtual reality starts happening in the real world. And it's just, you know, the, it, it's from this um, director who directed a lot of, um, really kind of popular thrillers. And so, it, well, you know, hopefully it'll be good. I also did an uh, Amazon pilot called Halfway House, which was, um, um, let's see, who was in that one? It was Blythe Danner, Matthew Lillard was in it, and I play a meth addict. <laughs> so we'll see which one goes. <laughs> awesome, so that's Amazon, and then Reverie is on? Um, Reverie is NBC. NBC, yes, I have that. <laughs> and Amy? Anything you can tell us about the unnamed X-Men pilot on Fox? I'm, I'm afraid to... I, I don't know. No. Nope. <laughs> I tried. I did what I could, guys. I did what I could. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. a lot of acknowledgement from you guys but I want to take a second and just acknowledge you guys because we would not be where we're at or at least I would not be where I'm at without your support and so I thank each and every single one of you for your support individually so thank you very much for that.